And I've been contributing to OpenStack for about five years. And this is actually the first OpenStack Day event I've been to. I've been really wanting to come to one. This one's very appropriate for me. I'm actually from the East Coast. I live down in Charleston, South Carolina. So this was a really fun trip for me to make. And what I'd like to talk about today is OpenStack and success. Uh, we've actually heard lots about this here at the event. We've heard some great user stories. Bloomberg, Walmart, Comcast. I uh, really enjoyed Jonathan's talk this morning covering several different really amazing uses of OpenStack and some, some ways that we can go forward in the future. Another thing you can do is ask people here at the event, what does success look like for them? And it probably means for each organization a different thing. Above all else, it's likely something to do with the deployments of OpenStack, how successful those are, either for that organization or perhaps their customers. There's lots of companies building products based on OpenStack or maybe building products that are used with OpenStack. Maybe companies providing services, and they may define their success and the, the uptake of their services, maybe support, that sort of thing, or training for OpenStack. Lots of different definitions of success. And when we think, at our, each of our companies, when we prioritize our investment in OpenStack, prioritize the work we're doing, naturally, we prioritize based on what success means to us, the what, what our company is trying to accomplish. But I would argue that there's at least one, probably more, but at least one major element of what success looks like that we all have in common. And that is the long-term health and success of the OpenStack community. And so my ask for all, everyone today is to think about um, what your organization is doing or what you could be doing to help with this aspect. And I sort of sum this up as, a, as upstream first. And this is just a mindset of prioritizing investment in the community. If the, if the community is not healthy, if the community is not successful, then, then we all lose. So it makes sense that we should all be thinking about how to invest there. So let's start with uh, one, one area of, of what upstream first means, and that's the code. So what do I mean by that? Uh, this, it's, it's really being open. It's doing your design, your development, testing all upstream from the earliest uh, iteration of what you're doing. You know, starting with the concept of something you want to add, you want to get out in the public and, and discuss that with the community at the beginning. This is actually one of the core values of openness for the OpenStack community, doing things in the open. And there's a lot of benefits for it. Obvious benefits for, for OpenStack overall, but I'd argue also major benefits for, for your organization. If you want to build real influence in the technical community of OpenStack and, and help shape the future direction of the technology, then this is how you do it. You've got to get in there and do the work and do it in a very open way. Uh, you're certainly, your maintenance burden is going to be less, because then you have the whole community working with you. Uh, you're going to end up with a higher quality result. We have a very, um, very, very good code review process. Every change gets reviewed by at least a couple of people. And it's very rare that a change uh, makes, it, makes it in with, um, without multiple iterations fixing things and making it better. And I believe that this, this way of working, this upstream first way of working, is critical to our goal of interoperability. Because we go through a process as a community to make sure things work for the most people possible. And that ends up with a result that more people can use, and that's critical to our story of interoperability. There's a flip side of all of this. You know, if you don't work this way, I believe you're going to end up with a lower quality result, not taking advantage of our code review process. I think you're going to have a hard time managing user expectations. I've seen this happen several times. Maybe a company's working on a feature, and they're eager to get that deployed to their users uh, quickly, and they deploy it before they've actually completed the process of getting this integrated upstream. But here's what can happen is you end up with uh, what, where the upstream version ends up may be completely different and incompatible with what you originally delivered to your customers. And that pain is going to end up being uh, transferred down to your users at some point. They're going to have to deal with you know, moving to a version that's incompatible with what you originally gave, gave them. And again, I want to point out interoperability. Different people having dip different versions of, of features that work different ways are, is completely counterproductive to our goal as a community towards interoperability. So I'm talking a lot about development. Uh, one point I want to make is, is there's a lot more that needs to happen in the development community than adding features. Features are awesome. By all means, if you have ideas, please, please bring them. Uh, that's important for OpenStack. But if you want to know about like, where are we doing you know, well and where is there stress in the community and tension and where we actually need more help, it's, it's, actually, it's anything but features. That's actually something we do not struggle to get is people working on features. What we need is sort of a, a, a more of a rebalancing of people doing everything else that it takes to make the development community health, helpful, um, healthy. And just some examples of that, that's helping with code reviews. Every change needs to be reviewed by at least two other people. Fixing, fixing bugs, helping triage issues in the bug tracker, that sort of thing. 
So just as an example of like the behavior that I, that I like to see for people coming into the community, I went back and looked at you know, what did my first six weeks in OpenStack look like. It was driven by a feature I wanted to add. Uh, when Red Hat got involved in OpenStack, we looked at technology being used. We identified uh, one area. Uh, so OpenStack was using RabbitMQ, and we had a team working on something else. It made sense to try to add support for the other thing and see how well that worked. So I wanted to add that. Um, I did a trivial documentation fix first. That was probably just getting my environment set up and working through the process. I fixed a small bug. Then I got into the area where I wanted to add the feature, and I wanted to just improve that in general. I added a lot of documentation to the API, tried to clean up the code a bit, make it a little bit easier to understand. I added my feature. I feel lucky that I was able to get in as quickly as I did. But then I switched gears, and I focused on just fixing general bugs, completely unrelated to my feature. I was thankful that the community took on my feature that most people don't, didn't care about, and I wanted to help. Uh, in general by fixing bugs. So that's the kind of behavior that I, that I hope to see from people jumping in. Another thing I want to talk about is horizontal teams in OpenStack. OpenStack has 58 official project teams. Many of those are, are the projects that you, that you know and use, like Nova, Neutron, Keystone, et cetera. But there's a lot of support and coordination required to make all these teams operate and work well together. And horizontal teams are the part of the community that work across all of these projects to make sure they work. So how can you help? This is an area that that people can help. So let's go through some examples. So release management is an example of a horizontal team. Their mission is to coordinating the release of OpenStack deliverables by defining the overall development cycle, release models, publication processes, version rules and tools, then enabling project teams to produce their own releases. So you may be aware that, uh, or you likely are aware, that OpenStack does a release every six months, but there's actually a lot more to it. And there's, there's details along the way. We have milestones and several different deadlines. So this is one way that, that I think it actually applies to everybody, is be aware of the release cycle. Be aware that there's more to it um, than that six-month cadence. Um, there's several things that happen along the way. Some examples are if you're contributing code, you need to know about what, you know, where we are in that cycle. You don't want to submit things at the wrong time. It can be disruptive. Another thing is be maybe you're organizing some sort of community activity or event. You don't want to organize that on top of an important deadline. That can be disruptive to what we're trying to accomplish. Another thing you can do for this team or many other teams is serve as a liaison. So horizontal team liaisons are people that serve as the primary interface between a horizontal team and a project team. So maybe your focus is working on something like Neutron, but you can use some of your time to interact with, say, the release management team or some other team to help ensure that your project is, is staying aligned and doing the right things in that area. Let's talk about another example of a, a horizontal team. The infrastructure team, they develop and maintain the tooling and infrastructure needed to support the development process and general operation of the OpenStack project. So they run a lot of services that we use, like a wiki, the wiki, the code review system, that sort of thing. They also run the CI infrastructure that, that we have grown to depend on so heavily. And if you're not aware of that, then I think you should be, because it's actually pretty fascinating. So every patch that gets submitted to OpenStack, several different CI jobs run on that to help validate it, to get early feedback and then test run again when it's approved before it gets merged. So this is a snapshot from a dashboard that you can go look at. This is like the middle of the afternoon one day last week, and showed that there were 627 uh, nodes in use. That's the number of CI jobs running. That's the number of VMs in use uh, at that moment. Uh, and it was also this system node pool was building 126 nodes, uh, preparing them for use in the middle of deleting 32. So this was a snapshot in time. Another way to look at it is how many nodes are we actually using a day? How many CI jobs are we running a day? So this was the first four days of last week. So Monday, 15,000, 19,000, 21,000, and then on Thursday, nearly 25,000 nodes. So this is fascinating from a, a number of um, reasons. One, just the, you know, being aware of the scale of what our CI system is running. This is, um, it's, it's quite large. I also looked at like, how many nodes do we use in the last year? It was something like 3.75 million, which kind of shocked me. I didn't really, didn't realize that. I hadn't looked at uh, that, that time scale before. Um, this is also a nice testament to OpenStack. This is all running on OpenStack clouds scattered around the world. Companies donate capacity. It's also a nice testament to the interoperability of OpenStack. The infrastructure team has been able to develop tooling that runs this across many OpenStack clouds. That's effectively what, you know, what we define as interoperability, be able to take a workload and, and run it on multiple clouds. And that's what this is doing. Now, if you look at these numbers, you can also imagine that if there's problems, if this team is not adequately staffed, they don't have the help they need, then the OpenStack community grinds to a halt. So I would encourage you to um, maybe think about this if this is an area that you can help. So how can you help besides donating capacity, which we're very good at using, if that's something that you're uh, in a position to do? 
But this team needs, what they need is more long-term, half to full-time contributors. They need people dedicated to this team. And they need them in all time zones to help keep everything running. And part of it is you know, keeping the systems running, but there's also a lot of code to maintain. There's a lot of code that's been written to keep all this working. Uh, they do amazing work. I'm a huge fan of, of what this team does. And if you're, especially if you're one of the large organizations that's heavily invested in OpenStack, I would encourage you to think if this is an area that you might be able to help. Another thing you can do is serve as a liaison. I mentioned that before. All projects have liaisons to this team to help review changes to CI jobs and so forth that affect that project. Another example is documentation. So they, pr they provide documentation for OpenStack projects. They develop the, the tools and processes to uh, ensure quality accurate documentation. And they treat documentation like code. So you can contribute to the docs just like you contribute to any other project. So this team is, is awesome. They develop great content. If you haven't looked at what they've, they've built, or if you haven't looked lately, I would encourage you to do so. Take a look at docs.openstack.org. And uh, I, I, you know, I hate to even have to say this, but you know, if we don't document our features, they might as well not exist. Um, this, this problem is not particularly unique to OpenStack, and that's no excuse either. But uh, you know, I, I kind of checked in with the leader of the documentation team. How many developers do you think really help? And you know, it, the answer is very, very few. And that's unfortunate. Uh, I think that perhaps as a community, we could, we could uh, afford to raise the bar on our documentation expectations of developers when they're writing features. Just something to think about. So how can you help? What they need is the more active and engaged subject matter experts. They need people to understand the technology to at least help review content, but hopefully help write it. And they, they're very thankful for contributions of any form. You don't have to write perfect documentation. When I asked for like, you know, what would be helpful type of con uh, contribution, the, the leader, she said, you know, just to start with, open a bug with some bullet points about your feature. Like, even that's helpful. So at least start there. Another way to do it, which I think is, um, is really nice, is just write a blog post about your feature. Don't really worry about how it fits into the rest of the OpenStack docs. Just a dedicated post about your feature. That's very helpful to them. They can use that as source content to integrate. Or, of course, you can write patches for documentation. And that is, above all, very helpful. So there's more horizontal teams. I can't really go through all of them in much detail, but I want to mention some other ones. There's Oslo. They develop shared libraries across all OpenStack projects. We need pe people continuing to help develop and maintain those things and work with projects on adopting them. There's a QA team that maintains projects like DevStack, Grenade, and Tempest, important for development environments and our automated testing environments. A stable branch team that is responsible for backporting bug fixes to the branches for uh, past OpenStack releases. A vulnerability management team that manages the process when we get security vulnerabilities reported to OpenStack. And an internationalization team working to do translation of OpenStack for um, many languages. There's also other liaison opportunities, working groups you can get involved in. There's an API working group trying to establish you know, best practices or common designs for the way we do REST APIs in OpenStack. A logging working group trying to develop more consistency for logs in OpenStack. We identify interproject liaisons. So if two projects interface with each other, we have like, points of contact, people that are experts in the way these projects interact with each other. Um, there's cross-project specs when people propose uh, things that affect many projects. We need people that are involved in that process and helping review that for a project. There's a wiki page, cross-project liaisons. You can look at the lists who the li liaisons are for all these horizontal teams and so forth. You can go take a look and get ideas for how you might be able to get involved. Further upstream, I also want to note that you know, OpenStack is, is huge and, and great. OpenStack also re relies on many other projects. And a personal example for me is um, while my primary goal is helping to improve OpenStack, I've been working in the Open vSwitch project quite a bit for the last year and a half and have become a committer in that project. But it's all driven by my uh, work on OpenStack. Doug Hellman put out a call to, on the OpenStack development mailing list asking for people to send uh, examples of projects they've contributed to that touch OpenStack in some way. I don't think this was like an exhaustive poll of the development community or anything, but it was able to list 86 projects. I couldn't fit them effectively on a slide, but he has a blog post you can take a look at and get a nice idea. I think this is a nice celebration of how our work on OpenStack sort of filters out into other communities. And there's a lot more than development, of course. If Maybe you're not a developer, but if you're in a position to help set priorities and, and give uh, give people time for what to work on. I would encourage you to give people time to work on the types of things that I'm talking about today, the types of things that have to get done for the OpenStack community to remain a, a healthy um, community that's working well. 
Uh, there's a product working group. I think there's a talk about this one. Product managers get together to collaborate. And of course, get, to, get involved in discussions and review proposals. We need more than developers looking at uh, you know, our, our proposals for new features. Make sure it actually meets what you expect. And share your experience. I think coming to events like this, talking to people out in the hallway, is, is, is hugely important. And I'm, and I'm thankful that you're all here today. So just to sum up my message for today, when you think about OpenStack success, I would encourage you to include in, in, in your thinking about that uh, the, the long-term health and success of the community and, and think upstream first. Thank you very much.